expert in dry wit and humor and purveyor of urban cool, Fran Leibowitz, the cultural satirist, will be appearing for one night only in Pittsburgh. This is happening at the Carnegie Music Hall on Friday, March 3rd at 7.30 p.m. The star of the Netflix series, Pretend It's a City, will be in conversation with moderator and writer Damon Young. After the talk, there will be a 30-minute Q&A as well as a book signing. If you don't bring your books, that's okay because books will be available for sale at the event, courtesy of Penguin Bookshop. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Here's what Pittsburgh is talking about. If you've been here for 10 minutes, you know what Permanis Brothers is and that people here love to put fries and ranch dressing on pretty much everything. But it's good sometimes to be reminded that not everyone thinks about Pittsburgh like Pittsburghers do. Today, CityCast Morgan Moody and I are talking to our boss. It's Tuesday, February 21st. I'm Megan Harris, and this is CityCast Pittsburgh. Today we're with a, a very special guest, um, first time on our podcast. It's David Plotz, journalist, uh, former former CEO of Atlas Obscura, writer at Slate, now our boss, now our boss, CEO and boss of, <laughs> of CityCast. So we're we're I hope we're uh, rolling out the red carpet for you. It's a little dusty in here. And Morgan's <laughs> closet. <laughs> Thank you so much for being my my uh, my guide to Steel City. Yeah. So David, what's your impression of Pittsburgh? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> I'm here as an outsider because I want you guys to understand that not everyone's from Pittsburgh. Not everyone has all that inside Pittsburghness, and I want to give you a sense about what is it that non Pittsburghers want to know about Pittsburgh. All right, let's get started. Yeah. First question: <laughs> Is Pittsburgh a city that's branding is too good? That Steel City is an amazing brand, but is it actually relevant? Is there any actual steel in your day or week? You know, our skies aren't filled with black soot anymore. Um, Thank goodness. But I guess <laughs> we're still a town. We are still a town of industry. Um, yeah, yeah, the industry's just changed a lot. And of course, China makes most of our steel these days. Um, Pittsburgh doesn't love that. But yeah, we're more of an eds and meds community now. So um, still industry, just a slightly different vocabulary behind it. If people don't work in steel... What do they do? What do all those college grads who have flocked to Pittsburgh in the last 20 years do? I cannot name a single Pittsburgh employer except that medical center that you guys are always talking about. That's it. UPMC. They employ everybody. And, That's um, it. They probably have a you hand guys, in this Do podcast. you guys work for them too? <laughs> I think Secretly. they are legitimately the largest employer in the state of Pennsylvania. But it's got to be. Is there any, does anybody work for anything besides UPMC? Yeah, well, the UPMC is an outcropping of uh, the University of Pittsburgh. So like one of the biggest business centers in the Commonwealth is in Oakland. I think it's third behind downtown Pittsburgh and center city Philly. Oh. So there's a lot of university work. There's a lot of tech work um, and a ton of companies are headquartered here. PNC Bank, PPG Industries, uh, Howmet, Aerospace, uh, oh. Dick's Sporting Goods, Alcoa, Westco, Wabtec. Um, historically, Heinz, self-driving cars even, they were huge here for a minute. You couldn't walk down a street three or four years ago without seeing without one. Without getting hit Everywhere. by one, probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's in Arizona, David. Get it right. But Pitt's campus is Oakland, and you absolutely probably could get hit by a, a driverless vehicle there. Uh, one of the things I did notice about Pittsburgh when I was there, steep hills. Mm. Uh, what are weird things about living in Pittsburgh that are caused by the crazy hills? Like, do you have plumbing problems? Do cars slide down the streets? Do houses fall down unexpectedly? <laughs> Funny just, you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just recorded an episode today talking about um, landslides and how climate change is impacting landslides here in Pittsburgh. And um, it's always been a thing, I guess, because of the way that our city is forged. A lot of people think that... Um, it's not even like a, a, a livable place because it is so hilly and it's 
it's just it's just difficult to maneuver um, and to get around. But um, I think it's actually a credit to the engineering of the city that people mm. build houses where they do. Um, yeah. I don't know that I personally would want to live in one, but you can get some incredible views if you're willing to, you know, put your entire house on a stilt. But can your house slide away after a good rain? Yes. Yeah. Well, and it makes construction season especially challenging. Yes. To answer your question, David, <laughs> cars can slide down streets. Actually, Pittsburgh boasts what it says is the steepest street in the world, Canton Street. Um, so it's got a pretty heavy incline that really makes you feel kind of disoriented to stand on and then try to walk up as well. All right. Here's a geography conundrum for you. So apparently... I know that you have Three River Stadium, because you had Three River Stadium. It's probably not called that anymore. It was demolished 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. I I look at a map. There are two rivers. So mm-hmm. are you guys bad at math? There's three rivers. There's um, not three rivers. I don't even know what you're talking about. There are three they rivers. Into, it becomes The one. confluence is at the point, and on one side, it's the Ohio, which is fed by the Allegheny and the Monongahela. But the Ohio is just the it's just like the merger of those two rivers. Like you could just call the it boundary. the Allegheny. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're basically saying is the Ohio River starts where those two rivers meet. Correct. Yeah. That's two rivers. Just, <laughs> no offense. <It's> not. <laughs> you can stand on multiple states boundaries at the same time. You're still in multiple states, despite the mm-hmm. fact that your feet are still only one foot apart. My upstairs neighbor just installed a basketball hoop in his living room. So it's time for me to start looking into buying a home. That's why I recommend checking out the How to Buy a Home podcast. Before I listened to the podcast, I didn't even know what questions I had. Now I'm starting to make real plans. Host David Sedoni has years of experience helping first-time home buyers close on houses they thought were impossible. His How to Buy a Home podcast is a free resource that breaks down what you need to know to make buying a home a reality. Like, will your mortgage be more than your current rent? David can guide you through the next steps that are right for you. Start listening to How to Buy a Home podcast today at howtobuyahome.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Have questions? Ask David directly at howtobuyahome.com. Visit howtobuyahome.com and make this the last year that you rent. Now I'm now it's going to get hard, okay? So just I want you guys to emotionally gird yourself for what's about to happen. <laughs> Are you embarrassed slash ashamed that Philadelphia is so much better than you in the only sport that matters? You mean basketball where we don't have a team? Yeah, I'll accept that. Yeah, because they lost. You know what I'm You know what I'm saying. I do not acknowledge your question. If you go to the Super Bowl and lose. <laughs> yeah. Boy, we're so jealous of a Super yeah. Bowl loss. I still have on my Steelers shirt from yesterday. Um, <laughs> yeah. My child had a Steelers onesie on this morning. Bite me. <laughs> you have to leave him to bite me. Why are your other mascots penguins and pirates? You are nowhere near the sea. You're nowhere near the Antarctic. I don't think there's any history of piracy in 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 your part of the world so why why do you have these weird mascots uh i can't speak for the penguins because honestly i don't know that i've ever looked that up but the pirates at least i guess had to do with a trade that upset a lot of what was then the predominant baseball league at the time um so the alleghenies traded pittsburgh or vice versa um and it was considered a piratical act um, and a little untoward and made him a little bit notorious. So the name stuck over time, or at least that's the legend that locals like to talk about. Interesting. That's, that's an honorable, that's honorable. That's a respectable reason for to have a mascot. When you think about people from Philadelphia and you compare them to Pittsburghers, what do you say? You say like, those Philly people are like X and we're like Y. What are the X and Y there? We're so different. I don't even think that it ever crosses my mind. Um, okay, but you were, I mean, what? They're they are uncivilized. They are uh, morons. <laughs> You're just trying to uh, start fights smell. between us and CityCast Philly. I just want to know what what you really think about I think, them. I think they're, they're grittier. I think they're grittier really? than Pittsburgh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I defer to the local on this one, so well, what, you say what, so. How, what do you think the quality of the, the admirable quality of you Pittsburghers is? Philly's very East Coast. Um, it, it's, you know, it's 
just a couple of hours outside of New York. So they have that influence. They're right outside of like Jersey. They have that influence. We don't really have that. We're very much so like a I, and I, I'm sorry for all the people listening from Pittsburgh who hate this, but like we are very much so a Midwest city. Um, that's more so what we align with, even though our state is like Northeast. So I think that's the big difference. Like it's more like an East Coast hard city vibe. And then Pittsburgh's a very different pace. I like that. I think that's well said. Yeah. Do you have, is there a Philly, a Pittsburgh equivalent of the Philly cheesesteak? I mean, there's the Primanti sandwich, of course. Yeah. Which if you're not familiar with it, is this big, huge monstrosity I'm holding up my hand because it is fist sized <laughs> um, of usually cold cuts and combination coleslaw and french fries um, but if you're born a salad uh, vein we I have of course that. the Pittsburgh I salad I had a permanente sandwich do, uh, what did you think of it I don't know I was like a 25 year old dude oh, like yeah. probably having a beer with it with my college roommates <laughs> I'm and that's sure the I only appropriate <laughs> time to to eat a permanente sandwich is like after hours if you need to sober up as a young person, when your digestive system can handle that. Yeah. So do you, either of you ever actually eat things with fries on it or do you just talk about it? Oh, I eat the salads. They're delicious. The salads? I mean, yeah. I, my thought, you could throw fries on top of anything and I'll, I'll eat it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and ranch. I think ranch is also a very pivotal Pittsburgh thing. Oh. Yeah. There are a couple of crass jokes that were told to me within my first week in Pittsburgh that all had to do with ranch. And I don't know that they're wrong. I just had ranch on a vegan pizza. It was vegan ranch last night. <laughs> so hmm. that's, yeah. What famous people are actually from Pittsburgh and don't say Andy Warhol? Jeff Goldblum. Who's wonderful. Uh, Joe Mangianello. Oh. Who just had an episode of Find Your Roots. I've been listening to my in-laws yeah. talk about that. They're uh, very excited. Anybody who's not a middle-aged, a middle-aged white actor. <laughs> a lot of jazz greats. Wiz Khalifa. Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera is from Pittsburgh? She doesn't mm-hmm. claim it. Yeah, she doesn't. But she's on a lot of murals here. Whoa. Yeah. I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of somebody like very uh far out there that um, pioneering journalist Nellie Bly. Uh-huh. You might not realize is from here, but is from here. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you really We've got Batman on lock around here. <laughs> you really do have a lot of uh Next year, it'd be like Tom Hanks. No, but he and, played Mr. Rogers, so and he donated to the public radio station. Oh, Mr. Rogers. What? Did, you didn't even say Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers yeah. from Pittsburgh. Well, yeah. you gave us I a hard time that. about middle-aged white men. <laughs> that's good. I think uh, Christina Aguilera is definitely the, that's the surprise for me. All right. I feel, um, okay, so here's what I've learned. I have learned that you put fries on things, um, that uh, if I move to Pittsburgh, I have to go work for the medical center. Um, <laughs> Probably. Yeah. And that uh, you you feel that Philly is uh, has a faster pace of life, but you are somehow have some kind of moral, central moral decency that they lack. Yeah. That's what I've learned. Is that, is that, are those the correct things to learn about Pittsburgh? I like that. Yeah. I also think Philly, Philly can be nice. I don't know. I feel like we're all nice. It's just different, different nice. What is it? The the kind but not nice, and the nice but not kind. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, like if wait, you wait. if you get a flat tire in the Pacific Northwest, they'll be like, "Oh man, that really sucks." I hope you figure it out, and they're out of there. If you get a flat tire in Central PA, they'll be like, "Oh, you freaking idiot! How did you not know how to f- change a tire? Move over. I got it. We're kind. <laughs> We're not all that nice." <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. That's great. <laughs> David, it sounds like you learned a lot about Pittsburgh. I did. Thank you so much for being my my uh, my guide to Steel City, as we that's what we insiders call it. All right, thanks, David. Thank you, guys. A little news before you go. For outdoor lovers, there's more acreage to play in around here. The Allegheny Land Trust has acquired green space in a bunch of surrounding communities, including Wilkinsburg, Shaler, Millvale, Baldwin, Moon Township, and more. The trust is dedicated to land preservation because by their count, we're losing way more space to development than our population should really demand. And those huge towers in the Mon River with the sticks sticking out of it, they once supported the Wabash Bridge, and they have a new owner. The Trib reports they had multiple offers and ultimately sold for $300,000. I can't imagine why anyone would want these things, let alone for that price, but I am excited to find out. (laughs) 
That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. We'd love to know, what do you want to know about Pittsburgh? Maybe we know the answer, or I bet we know someone who does. We promise to be a safe space for all your nebby or embarrassing questions for stuff that maybe you think you should probably already know the answer to by now. DM us on social or text us. We're at 412-212-8893. And don't forget to check out today's Hey Pittsburgh newsletter for a sneak peek into this week's neighborhood guide. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the city. See you soon. I used to live over there. I used to live um, Park and 16th. It was like the not so nice side of it. <laughs> I saw somebody get shot the day I was moving out. Oh. Yeah. Better than the day you're moving in.